going? Uh, day 35 of the manifestation journey. Uh, just leaving the job. Headed to work out. 3.37 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I wanted to come on here and just rant a little bit. And pose the question... Uh, why are we still debating God? Why are we still debating God? This was inspired by a conversation I had earlier today on my lunch period with uh, a particular individual who is uh, a professed Christian and believes you know, the legend of Jesus Christ and believes that there is a God external to you. And um, I obviously was arguing uh, man's influence and, and, and constructs uh, for purposes of manipulation and uh, control. Okay, that's generally my stance. Because, uh, because usually, you know, when researching, there are certain consistencies uh, when it comes to a religion, a tradition, a mythological, uh, you know, story. There's usually a thumbprint of a particular man in some type of authority um, position, such as a pope, a pastor, a bishop, and all the other uh, titles of nobility one may obtain uh, after accomplishing various levels of either academia or um, um, I'll just say religion. And so th these were the two sides of our discussion. Now the question again is why are we still debating? Why are we still wondering if there's a God? Uh, why is that even necessary? Quite simply, you know, I would assert, you know, that if there is a God external to humanity who loves humanity and who desires humanity to spend eternity with him, her, it, uh, then why not show yourself and quash the whole issue? With that being said, uh, I've seen a particular video, I think it was on YouTube or TikTok, where a gentleman was traveling in his automobile and it was stormy and rainy outside and he issued a challenge uh, you know allegedly uh, questioning the existence of God and, and said to no one you know, if God were real, I'd be experiencing a, uh, a thunderbolt or something to that effect right about now. And sure enough, there was a loud clap of thunder. And this was on videotape. And 
Ironically, the individual that I was discussing earlier on my lunch period today with uh, this topic with um, had sent me that video uh, as kind of a confirmation of his position that in a sense, see Courtney, this is what happens when you question uh, or this is proof of the existence of God because this individual challenged God by saying there should be a thunderbolt right about now and Eureka a clap of thunder happened so that is uh, enough that is symbolic that is not well not symbolic that is evidence in their mind of the existence of the God and you know just to comment on that on the sensibility or lack thereof of such an assertion uh, you know no one's taken into account that the man was driving through a storm already <laughs> uh, you know because that's type of sensibility matters little when you are desperate for any measure of validity in your belief, right? You're desperate, you're grasping for straws. And so any little, you know, piece, uh, which might, might be perceived as evidence, you'll take it. You'll go headlong with it. It doesn't matter that it was storming or raining outside already. It matters not. And so, I guess this is uh, exactly uh, going to the question of why we are even debating over a God, you know, any any longer. Why hasn't this issue been settled many centuries ago? Why does no why does no one have a legitimate uh, proof you know squashing or quashing this issue and furthermore once again how come this god uh, has not come forward presenting him or herself uh, and settling the, the matter, settling the score, if you will. And uh, another way to think about it is, why is it that humanity has to act at, in proxy? Why does humanity have to come to the rescue of this God uh, all the time? Why is that? Why is it that humans have to give an answer for the all-powerful, all-knowing, omnipotent God. Don't you find that true? You find that you're the one that's giving, if you were coming from Christianity or whatever, you know, don't you find that you're the one that has to give an answer for the existence of God? You find yourself arguing and fighting to defend? I know there's a, a scripture that says, uh, uh, to contend for the faith but my question is why shouldn't we have shouldn't we make use of our time in dealing with all the other issues of life you know don't we have to deal with enough already why, why is it necessary for us to spend so much time to dedicate 40 plus years of our lives in a religion driving to and fro, you know, uh, dealing with the various and manifold st standards imposed uh, by what I could only classify as demigods 
AKA pastors, bishops, deacons, missionaries. Uh, they set the rules for what you wear, how you look, allegedly in proxy for this God. Why is all of that necessary? Why is all of that necessary? Why are we still debating God? And why is no one, you know, really discussing and uh, divulging the maker, creator of the term God? I've dealt with this issue for quite a while. Um, I mean, it's a simple query. Look up the etymology of the word God or find its root. You, you may even find the particular individual that came up with the term. Uh, my research shows that it is a Germanic word or comes from the Germanic word got or G-O-D-T which means the source from which all things go up. The source from which all things go up. Now I can hear if, 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 if I was debating with my mother who is a um, who has been in Christianity all of my life uh, 47 plus years and um, you know she would say amen to that. That would be uh, reinforcement in her belief to hear me say, you know, that the definition of God uh, by the author of the term uh, is the source from which all things go up. Uh, when when debating with individuals regarding a God or Christianity or what have you, um, and I've heard this said before that more times than not the evidence for Christianity or for God is in um, the, the, the in, in the books uh, that are said to belong to the religion itself the religion uh, deal, dealing with the belief in God and Christianity um you know, so I guess what I'm finding is it is necessary as I believe it was oh, excuse me, I don't know if it was Darwin or Sir John Huxley I want to say it's the latter but I believe one of them was quoted as saying that even if there was not a God, it would be necessary to create one. I, mean, I, I, I want to say it's Sir John Huxley. Both of them were founders in the Darwin and Darwinism. I believe. I don't know. Fact check me on that. But and what was being said there is in relation to the necessity for organization, the necessity for control, because um, as William Blackstone is quoted as saying, uh, who was a judge, I believe, and jurist, it's quoted as saying that they created things like corporations and legal persons. Listen, because without it, men would not basically um, participate in society, meaning they would not cooperate with each other. Every man would be an island, and therefore you would have you wouldn't have organized society. All right, you would have um, 
some people call it anarchy. You know, no need for government because uh, we don't all want to be uh, lumped into some social order. And so Blackstone was saying this was the purpose for which we created things like the state or corporations. All right, likewise, again, think of uh, the aforementioned statement, which I believe was Sir John Huxley, I could be wrong, that if there was not a God, it would be necessary to create one. Do you Are you picking up the correlation between the two schools of thought or the two thought uh, thoughts here both uh, relating to the to, to the necessity uh, of togetherness cooperation in order to meet the end goal which is to establish control and order okay over uh, over a greater population of, uh, of diversity of, 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 of people of diverse backgrounds and cultures all right to create an organized system it becomes necessary to establish some type of uh, entity and I contend this is why uh, we are still debating God and man can continue will continue to create gods and uh, I, a perfect example is the uh, parable I'll say of the Wizard of Oz you know we see that that the fraud uh, um, professor or whatever he was used smoke and mirrors in order to garner control over the city uh, the Emerald City and over the people of Emerald City even they did not know that it was really a man behind the curtain they were just doing what they were told to do and everything stayed in accordance with the order and no one was the wiser until those pesky kids showed up Dorothy Toto the Tin Man you see and revealed that behind this great machine, behind the wizard, was merely a very small man pulling the levers uh, to produce the smoke and the mirrors and the colors and the flashing and the loud noise and the boom and everything like that. And, that, and that's what I contend has been going on for quite a long time. And uh, I believe that people are becoming enlightened now, uh, but probably not fast enough. <laughs> but, you know, this stuff has been going on forever. And so here we are debating God, and we're split. You know, the people are split, you know, in probably more than in half. Because not only are we arguing God, or a supreme ruler and authority, but we're also arguing the religion and which one is correct and which one is incorrect. And then we're arguing over the food that we should eat, you know, whether we should eat pork or whether we should do this and that. And then we're arguing over the type of clothes that women should wear. And then we're arguing over how long the hair of a woman should be. And then we're arguing over whether a woman should speak in church. How could an, an awesome, omnipotent, omnipresent uh, entity, which is not limited to the flesh, which is spirit, 
How could such an entity give two craps about what a woman's hair looks like? To me, and probably to you by now, only a man, a king, a demigod, would would take uh, thought of such a thing. Pants? Makeup? Wouldn't that seem kind of petty for a supernatural being to be concerned about that? One that is not restricted to or confined to the body, this finite uh, vapor suit. <laughs> it's here today and gone tomorrow. Why would God care about that? No, but I can tell you who would care about that. Probably a man who wants to solidify and keep power and control. He'd care, especially if he wants multiple uh, concubines, you know, wants to build his legacy on this earth and make sure that his bloodline, you know, continues off into the future for hundreds of years. All the gold and wealth stays in his coffers and it's passed down to his children. Yeah, then I, yeah, he would, yeah, oh yes. All women can only do thus and thus and thus. And by doing that, by controlling the women, then you can control the men because the men are gonna go where the women are and they're gonna go along with what the women uh, are doing. Uh, you see what I'm saying? So why are we still debating God? Because in my uh, research and, uh, and in my opinion, it is necessary to create one. It is necessary to create one. That's why we are arguing. And in the 80s, in closing, in the 80s, you were going to hell if you were watching TV in accordance with the Pentecostal and Apostolics. What happened? Did God suddenly speak today and say it's okay? But what about all the people back in the 80s that were ostracized and that were basically bullied <laughs> and walked away from the church because they're like, you know, this, I thought you guys loved me. Why does it matter if I have a TV? I know how to control my, my urges and things. You know, I know how to change the channel if there's something inappropriate there. You see? And the same thing goes with hair cutting for women and uh, wearing their, their their skirts and dresses above the knee and all this kind of stuff. All This, this is all the stuff I came out of. You know, makeup on your face. Oh, don't get me started. So we, so the woman is not supposed to be adorned. She's not supposed to be, uh, you know, beautified or anything like that. She's supposed to be just pale faced or, you know, uh, clean faced. You know, she can't beautify herself because, oh, that's bringing too much attention to yourself. Well, what's wrong with that? What's the opposite of that? No attention on yourself. Now, who told you that? Who benefits from that? I don't want any other man looking at my woman because she's mine. What do you mean she's yours? Like property? Yeah. Does that sound like like an om something that an omnipotent, omnipresent uh, God would be concerned about? Why? Why would he be concerned about that? Is he a jealous God? I know. Scripture says... I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Human-like emotions from a spirit. Something's wrong with that picture for me. But again, why are we still arguing God? Because I contend it is necessary in the grand scheme of things to establish control, to establish uh, kingship, authority, to keep a legacy, uh, you know, uh, uh, keep wealth and riches 
it is imp it is necessary to create one all right otherwise how could i get you to fear me how could i get you to fear me if you see me as a mortal man and i am the king sooner or later the gig will be up so how can i keep you under my thumb well, if I have the power of God on my side, and if I can demonstrate and show you and convince you and make you believe that God is on my side and tell you that God says that you are to obey those who have the rule over you, and I can get you to believe that, you're as good as cooked. Anyways, just wanted to put something on your mind. A bit of a controversial topic, but hey, I'm not afraid to talk about it. And we shouldn't be afraid to talk about these things. Um, the power, in my opinion, and what I'm researching and the purpose of the manifestation journey is to show and prove that the power comes from within you and I. Okay? Uh, and that anyone that speaks anything other than that has an agenda and uh, that would be a man's agenda. And, you know, you may believe whatever you want to believe. But nobody has a problem with that. You have the freedom uh, to choose what you believe in. I, I don't even, I don't have a problem with that. But when your ability and your privilege starts to subvert and subject me and mine, and there are threats, you know, of either violence or uh, you try to uh, indoctrinate fear and, you know, fear, instilling fear in someone is an act of terror. If you really get a hold of someone's psyche and mind and you're, and you're manipulating them and you have a, you have in a, a, a position of authority over them. You know, that's where things get iffy. That's where things get iffy. That's where things get iffy. So, but everybody has the right to believe what they choose to believe. Um, but don't allow someone, once again, to lord over you and to use what they are trying to indoctrinate you to or in to control you. And anybody, once again, and lastly, that, are, that is telling you that you are nothing and that you can do nothing apart from what they have to offer you, huh. hmm, I got a problem with that. All right, with that being said, I'll talk to you soon. Uh, yeah, see you soon.